Monster Jam fans and welcome back to another Monster Jam OCD video. Today we are finally getting the reveal of the 2020 single assortment poster for Spin Master Monster Jam. It feels like such a short time ago that we were just discussing the 2019 poster reveal for the yearbook but you know what the year flew by it was an amazing year but I did promise that 2020 would offer more than 2019 did and I'll be honest I think it does. I'm going to try to make this video very short so that I can actually premiere it on my YouTube channel. Before I did a recording of this video it was way longer so I'm going to try to keep it sweet and short. I will be to the point I want to hear your guys feedback rather than mine on the stuff but I will pass along any specific feedback that I feel is necessary. The yearbook also offers a few other things besides the poster which we will start with. The first being the Dirt Squad which are these kind of dozer mashups which are for monster sets. They're clearly intended for younger audiences but I do plan on trying to review them anyway. They just hit stores so that's the Dirt Squad. Those three are I believe the only ones that are coming out this year. Next up is the color shifting page which offers a few new trucks on this page. You can see El Toro Loco and Cyclops. Cyclops has a really cool looking eyeball. Then we have Gravedigger the Legend versus Gravedigger Red which features a clear red vintage chassis. Higher education with a completely new tooling. Thanks to Spin Master for doing that for me. I actually did make a big point about it being incorrect and I guess they took that feedback to heart and they completely retold higher education fully with all the details being accurate to the real truck. So that's awesome of them to do that. And then Brodozer also announced for Reveal the Steel. And then at the bottom, we have Alien Invasion versus Soldier Fortune Black Ops. I'm very intrigued to see what Alien Invasion looks like. I'm not sure what color they're going to use. Obviously, it can't be chrome because that's what the Reveal the Steel turns into. So maybe a black Alien Invasion or a green one. I don't know yet. We'll see. And then we have the Monster Jam Creature Series, which are the two packs that include action figures and their real life counterpart truck exclusive to the figure style. And the first one is Grim, which features this mashup of a 30th anniversary Gravedigger purple plus modern day Gravedigger along with Grim's boot colors, the white tires and red rims matching up to his boots, and a specialized paint color, the purple shiny pink color to match his jacket. And you can see Maximus finally getting its official name. Instead of the creator of chaos, the name of Max D's mascot is Maximus, and Captain Black, the official Captain's Curse and Pirate's Curse mascot right there with their own exclusive trucks as well. Then we have the big, big announcement before the poster, which is the Zombie versus Something series. I can finally say that the Zombie Invasion series will be its own series along with the Zombie versus Hunters. When they originally planned to do the Zombie series, after further discussion, they actually wanted to continue the versus aspect like fire versus ice. So the series that they chose are the hunters. So zombie versus hunters became the new thing. So fire and ice now retiring after spring 2020, fall 2020 will bring the first zombie versus hunters. The big thing about this is that the hunters are actually going to be made less than the zombies. So there won't be an even balance between the teams because the design team wanted to preserve the idea that in the movies that you see with zombie apocalypses, all of the survivors typically are outnumbered by these zombies. So there will be a massive amount of zombies, but only a few hunter trucks produced. So all of the single packs will be zombies. That's the zombie invasion series. And then the double packs will be the zombie versus hunter trucks. And you can see we have some new sneak peeks at these trucks since this kickoff show in September. Better renderings. I will make a big note here. The first thing I'm going to complain about is that the mutt ears are still in motion, continuing the style from 2019. I think that this should have been the year that they did bring them down. They corrected Mohawk Warrior. They should have brought the ears down for Monster Mutts. But you can see at the top, we have Monster Mutt Zombie versus Earthshaker Hunter. The extreme detail on both of these trucks. Look at the Hunter trucks. They have like these side panels that are mashed together with metal plates. They have chain links across the hoods and all this. Rust, zombie arms hanging out the sides, and oil splatters on their tires. Then the zombies also have the classic zombie detail as you can see there as well. Below that, we have Northern Nightmare, which does not feature a new tooling, unfortunately. Mohawk Warrior with the new Mohawk tooling for this year. Zombie Megalodon and Zombie Pirate's Curse. Better look at Zombie Pirate's Curse as well. Then below that, the double pack sneak peek, Gravedigger Zombie versus Son of Digger Hunter. And I got to be honest here, I think a lot of this was inspired by Bob Hagen's Rustums, which were a really big hit with the design team. They love his work. I actually gave them a Son of Digger by Bob Hagen, Digger's Diecast, who did Rustums before Spin Master even started doing their own line. So this is awesome. I think that they took inspiration, although they never confirmed that, from Bob. So that's really cool for that little inspiration by Bob. And then we come to the big one, which is the official look at the poster. It's very balanced, I'll be honest. I think it's probably one of the most balanced posters we've seen for any of the Moss Jam diecast lines. There's a lot of new things, 
51 of 62 are actual new trucks or new series. Something about them is different from their original style. Then 11 of them I would consider repeat variants. Clearly not exact repeats of last year. They are very similar and I would consider them kind of the weak links of this series. But we'll start at the top here. A big change from last year where we had Gravedigger on the poster. We now have Bakugan Dragonoid and Arena Favorites has been severely cut down by 10 trucks. Now we have five. Arena Favorites also featuring almost fully independent trucks. We have Mohawk Warrior, which actually says Great Clips for the first time ever on a poster. Right there, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior with the new Mohawk. Stone Crusher, Raising Cane after six years of no diecast, Raising Cane is back. Thrasher, which features a brand new Toyota tooling. And Black Pearl, which was delayed until this year. So there's Black Pearl finally getting out into the public hands. Then Legacy Trucks will bring my first kind of complaints towards this series. Legacy Trucks Gravedigger is very clean. I love it. That's not my complaint. My complaint comes with Soldier Fortune and Soldier Fortune Black Ops. I think that they could have definitely done Son of Digger with the blue beads and gray rims and Bakugan Dragonoid with red beads and gray rims in this series rather than the Soldier Fortune and Soldier Fortune Black Ops. That's my opinion though. Let me just guys think about that one. And then El Toro Local Orange, I do like that because it reminds me of the Thunder Alley roller coaster displays truck. And that one's really cool. And then, yes, finally, Yellow El Toro Loco, a highly requested truck that I was pushing for a lot because of you guys, has finally made it into the line. So congratulations. You guys have made a lot of these trucks possible this year. And then a brand new series, which I thought was going to be about three trucks, has expanded out to five. The Boneyard trucks, which feature roll cages that look like human bones and spines. Gravedigger Zombie Pirate's Curse, a brand new concept, Calavera, which is Skull in Spanish, and Son of Digger for that series. Calavera either can be a pickup truck, an SUV, or a brand new 3D Skull concept. I'm not sure yet. I can't wait to see what they have in store. Below that comes with the next complaint, Nitro Neons, really a series that could have been cut completely. Uh, I think they could have done much more in different series than the Nitro Neons, but Nitro Neons are back yet again. This time, only four of them. We have Octanator, which is actually my favorite one because it has a clear chassis. Jurassic Attack, my least favorite, Dragon, and unfortunately, Gravedigger is yet again returning. I hope that they do a new deco Gravedigger for this, maybe Cole Bernard's Purple. If it's a normal Gravedigger, I would be severely disappointed that they re-released another Nitro Neon Gravedigger after we got one last year. I'm not happy with this choice. I'm not even really happy with the Nitro Neons as a whole, but they're back again for 2020. And then a series that I thought was going to retire, Force of Nature has expanded by two trucks. You can see Aftershock is returning yet again with its full grill wrapping. You can see the green across the entire front accurate to the real life truck that's running today. Tropical Thunder, Full Charge, a brand new concept charger truck with pink and blue. And then Thunder 4x4, another returning independent for this year. So a lot of new independents making their way into the line. Then World Finals has brought a huge surprise. Not only did we get World Finals 19 Encore Max D accurately done with the body and the silver decals. By the way, check out my review tomorrow on this truck. We also have, for the first time ever, Split Paint Job Bounty Hunter from World Finals 15. I can't believe they actually stepped into the world of split paint jobs. They have finally broken that ceiling that we've been waiting for someone to do. Mattel did do a split paint job Hot Wheels, but they did not decide to do the split paint job Avenger because they called it, quote unquote, too hard to do. So Bounty Hunter now opens the door for the other split paint job Bounty Hunter and Avenger possibly to be done by Spin Master in the future. And World Finals 20 Avenger is likely going to be in that spot where it's blacked out right now. So great World Final series. I cannot wait to see what Avenger looks like. Possibly the 57 Bel Air. I'm more than certain it's probably going to be that because they need to catch up on those anyway. Then the Rough Crowd continues to be a short series. We have Monster Mutt Poodle for the first time ever. One of my favorite concepts. Scooby-Doo, which is one of those repeat trucks in the 11. Uh, they didn't change anything about it. The tail maybe should have been done in a different way. But there's Scooby-Doo once again. And Wolf's Head, one of the best looking concepts they've created yet and I can't wait to see that one on store shelves. And the Overcast series is retiring with these final three trucks being made. After eight trucks are made for any Deco series, specific series, such as Overcast or Inverse trucks, the truck series, I believe, is set to retire. So Overcast is finishing up with Zombie, Earthshaker, and Max D. I am very excited for Earthshaker. I'm not sure what they're going to do for Max D just yet, but we will see soon as the Overcast series comes to a close. And then at the top right of the poster, the most important stuff, I think, we have the Ride Trucks, the brand new chase piece replacing the training trucks for 2020. The first one that we had announced was the Ride Truck Gravedigger with the retro tires. And now today we are announcing the BKT, Blue Thunder, Megalodon, El Toro Loco, and my biggest shocker, 
Earthshaker. I could not believe when I saw this uh, that they're actually going to make an Earthshaker ride truck. I can't wait to see the creativity behind what they will do with Earthshaker's tooling. But take a look closer at BKT and you'll notice that it actually has side view mirrors, a completely new pickup truck casting, and a new canopy eight seat casting for the ride truck seats. So this is a different casting than Gravedigger, which features about, I think, 10 seats or so, or maybe 12. But this time we have an eight seat casting for this specific setup for Blue Thunder and BKT. So that means they've spent a lot of money on the ride trucks specifically for the chase pieces. Unbelievable that we're getting ride trucks. I still cannot believe that we're going to see these soon. And then we have a little bit of a disappointment with Retro Rebels. I will be honest. The Retro Rebels features Gravedigger, Backwards Bob, my favorite by far. It looks insane. It's actually backwards, correct tooling. Everything looks insane with it. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Maximum Destruction, a big shock for me as well. Can't believe they're already doing that one. That offers now Team Mens and the Gold Max D from World Finals 15 to be made. And this is probably the biggest disappointment of the entire poster. Gravedigger the Legend is returning yet again for its second year in Retro Rebels. I'm not sure if this is going to be the purple body or if it's going to be a yellow Beelox blue body, but I really hope that it's not going to be the blue body again. It's taking up a spot in a series that I really love and to see it so short this year, it's very unfortunate. And I really hope that it's going to be the purple one. If it's the purple one, I'll cut it a ton of slack, but if it's the blue one, I am going to be very upset, but here's the Retro Rebels. I can promise Backwards Bob will be the standout from this series, unless that Gravedigger is something significant. I don't know what that is yet, so we'll see. And then the Heroes and Villains series, a brand new series brought to you by the DC contract that Spin Master was able to obtain. We have Batman, Wonder Woman with a brand new paint scheme, Superman with a brand new casting, and my favorite one, the Joker is insane. It is a brand new body. It's really awesome. It looks just like the Joker and what you would think his personality is like for a car. So Joker, that's going to be the best one, I'm sure. Superman, new casting. Batman also featuring a brand new casting. And Wonder Woman with a new paint scheme. Elemental Trucks, a new series kind of falling off the Fire and Ice series and into a different mode. We have Earth Gravedigger, which features earthy tires. Megalodon with watery tires. Dragon, which I assume will be fire. And Hurricane Force, which will be wind. And if you notice the decals on the trucks, they do feature dust, water on the Megalodon, kind of hard to see in this render. And then Dragon, I'm assuming, will have fire and Hurricane Force should have some gusts of wind on its side panels. So I'm very excited. By the way, Megalodon's render is messed up. Don't take that one into much consideration. That's not how it's going to look. It's not going to be shortcut like that. But there's the new Elemental Trucks, brand new for 2020. And the Crazy Creatures has been cut down to only three trucks. We have Dragonoid Aurelius, I believe that's the name. Free Bird, a brand new bald eagle representing the US of A, and a new zebra concept, the Racing Stripes monster truck. Below that, I think besides ride trucks, this is my favorite thing I've ever seen made for diecast trucks. We have the Reckless monster trucks. Salvager is the first one in the series, a mashup of a bunch of different car parts and rusty headers and different mismatched rims. You can see green, red, and blue. And then next to that, we have Reckless Trucks Gravedigger. Now, this one is I think the biggest standout of the entire poster. We have mashed up pieces of all different Gravediggers. Gravedigger 3, the primer red Gravedigger, blue Gravedigger on the hood, the classic Gravedigger style headlights, and then on the roof we have Green Ghost, and I believe the right side panel might even be different as well. So we'll see what happens with that, but I think this is the biggest standout of the entire poster reveal. We also have gray, rusty brown, and yellow rims on this thing with a rusty brown chassis. And El Toro Loco will be a mashup of orange, yellow, and black El Toro Loco. Can't wait to see what that looks like in diecast form. Below that, Danger Divas comes to the next disappointment. I think that Monster Met Dalmatian could have been cut out of the singles packs, or they could have done the ears down to make it a new variation. Definitely um, a really big disappointment for Danger Divas. Queen Bee, I love this concept. No complaints about that. It could have been pushed to Crazy Creatures, though. And W, it's another repeat of last year. It has new rims. Uh, hopefully, the W will be something worth buying. But it looks like they did do the corrections that I had requested, which were the headlight sockets being in silver and some better wrapping around the front grille. Besides that, there's not much new about it. And I think the Danger Diva series could have used some better trucks or a new variation for Monster Met Dalmatian to make it a little stronger. But there's the Danger Diva series. Only three trucks this year for 2020. And to finish off the poster... Hopefully I made this video a little bit shorter. We have inverse trucks. The Brodozer looks insane. Alien Invasion, also a very interesting concept. I hope that the green is a little darker in the final product, but there it is with the Alien Invasion. And the final truck for 2020 assortment, singles, we have Northern Nightmare inverse trucks. So it looks like it's going to be a gray dominant body with a little bit of red instead of the classic paint scheme. 
and that will finish off the 2020 poster for singles assortments this is just the tip of the iceberg for 2020 but it's a big portion so i hope you guys have enjoyed let me know what you guys think about these trucks in the comments below let me know what you guys are looking forward to still in 2020 and in the future of mosh m diecast thank you to team spinmaster for listening to me on these suggestions and the community and i'll see you guys next time this is reiner mosh m ocd signing out